Hey there, today we're gonna to talk about how to analyze the price of a house in the Bay Area. Uh, I'm Alice Parsevar, I do real estate work. I help buyers buy homes in Bay Area and sellers list their homes um, and get them sold for good prices. And so today we're gonna to talk about prices because it is the most common question I get asked time and time again from clients. And I'm gonna try to make this really easy because I know that it's very overwhelming as a new buyer, um, even as a seller, it, it can be kind of difficult to be like, okay, where do I price to make it popular? This video is gonna focus on the buyer side of things. So if you're a buyer, you pick the right one. And then in the next, in another video, I'll be um, covering sellers. And so one thing to note for this is this is not um, a, a comprehensive how to do an appraisal. Um, this is how to do it in a kind of bidding war type environment in a market that is hot. Um, and not that every house you try to get or you um, go under contract for will have a bidding war, but this is just like to keep it in your mind as you're looking at pricing in the Bay Area because things are very different here as you might've learned from other markets. And so I think it's, it's good to kind of get a walkthrough. Um, and it's something that I wish that someone told me long ago when I was back years ago when I was a buyer. Okay, so we're gonna start here. And um, I try to pick one that's that I'm not familiar with so that it kind of it mimics uh, how you would be doing it. So we're in San Mateo right now. Um, Oakland is really different because Oakland will price very low and that can really confuse new buyers where they think, oh, this price is $7.99, but then it sold for 1.3 million, why is that? And that's just the way Oakland is. Um, and the peninsula I've noticed is not always like that compared to Oakland. And it, it really has to do with the agent type over there. Um, so we're gonna start with this property and we'll say that you're in a, a 1.4 budget range, like 1.4 million. And I, I always recommend like trying to go a little bit below your max, just to be conservative, especially if you get in a bidding war situation and um, you want to go a little bit higher. So as you can see here, this is listed at 1.29. Um, if you've ever done an offer or thought about it, you've probably seen that this is probably not gonna go for 1.29. And so the first thing I'll do is I'll go to Zillow. Um, and a lot of agents will say like, this estimate doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. But if you're in a bidding situation or looking at this and there's 40 other people looking at this, some of those people will start to look at this estimate and that's how they're going to like think about the price in their mind. And so you might be going up against someone who is looking at this estimate too and thinks that that's the price. So that is why I like to point that out to buyers. So again, this isn't what an appraiser would appraise it at necessarily, but it is what other buyers are thinking of bidding on that or could or might. Um, so it could be 1.38. So now, again, as an agent, we don't normally tell people, oh, look at this estimate, but um, it is good to keep that in mind. So the range is 1.3 to 1.48. And agents have very um, complicated, like detailed reports we can give you. But if you're just eyeballing things, you probably don't want to ping your agent every second and say, hey, can you like analyze this property? You probably want to get your full detailed report when you actually want to make an offer and when you like have fallen in love with the property. Um, so I also tend to like look at the history of the property. So as you can see here, like it's sold in 2014 and I'll kind of, after you've looked at a few, you'll start to like get a feel for like how to do this. Um, but what we really care about for pricing is um, the past solds. Um, a common mistake people make is they'll look at other ones for sale and they'll be like, oh, all these ones for sale are listed at 1.2. And how many bedrooms does this have? Let me see again, that again. It's a two one on this one. So this is very a small, 900 square feet, pretty small. Um, what people tend to want here, as you might know, in San Mateo is the commute. Maybe the school system's good. Um, maybe they have a high schooler or maybe you have a high schooler or you have an elementary school child coming soon. Uh, so we don't care about the sales so much. We care about the solds. And so Zillow has like a pretty handy thing here like where you can look at solds. And this will really help you determine how much this could go for. So this isn't a very good comparable because this is a three two and the house we just saw was a two one and a 900 square feet, similar square feet, um, sold for 1.35 though, okay, many years ago. And chain, as you know, like prices can exponentially rise. Um, and that's, that's not a comparable, that's too long ago. 
So now that we've kind of looked, Zillow doesn't always give us great recent comparables. So let's go take this address and we gotta go back and go get it. I will take this if I'm like on my phone and I don't have access to agent resources or your agent isn't with you and I will look it up and I'll go try to find the Redfin listing of it. Um, and I will go and see if there's a Redfin estimate and not, they all, aren't always present on the listing. Sometimes the agent will remove it because they want to get like a bidding war or like, honestly, I wouldn't remove it. I think it helps like people baseline unless they really think their property is worth more and it just doesn't reflect. So according to Redfin, this is 1.4 million. So I would tend to think, okay, somewhere between like a 1.3 to 1.4. And you're probably thinking, wow, a 900 square foot like house, um, that's so small. But the reason too to keep for houses, the reason they end up like this is because sometimes people will like be looking at condos and they'll be like, well, if this condo is 1.1, why don't I just get a house and add another few hundred K? And so that's why houses tend to like be so high, even if they're small, because people are thinking like, well, it's better than a condo. Um, I'm not bashing condos. I think condos are great too. And um, if you don't like to do a lot of maintenance, a condo is definitely the way to go. Uh, I have many buyers who buy condos and TIC units. Um, and I've had many who buy houses and it kind of just depends on um, what your preferences are. So now the thing I like about Redfin here, and again, an agent can help you do a deep dive. So just ask your agent. If you don't have an agent, you can ping me. I'll help you with that. Uh, and you can go look at, let's see here, it, it kind of changes. I'll look, I also look at this. I'm like, okay, how many people are favoriting this? And then I'll look at Zillow and I'm like, hmm, let's see here. How many people saved it and how many people view? 43 over eight days to me isn't too high, but I mean, it, it like really varies. Like on the holidays, you'll have um, less activity actually than the weekdays or like normal weeks. And I think it's because people are working and looking at houses. Okay, so this one has 64 favorites. So it's like probably gonna get some bids. Um, and here it says hot home. Like, do not worry if it says hot home. I've seen many hot homes not go for, they haven't sold like immediately. And so I won't worry too much, but it does indicate a little bit that a lot of people are clicking on the listing. Okay, so you read a little bit. So as you're looking at this, you're thinking, okay, that's the comparable, but now let's go see if we can try to find a two one that is similar. Okay, so it's definitely, we know it's not gonna be this, not gonna be 2.2. And these are ones that are still for sale, I think. We want the sold ones. So let's go to sold ones, two one. Okay, here's one that's so similar. And we also wanna look at location. So we're looking here and it's, a, it's sold for um, 1.37 in August. As of today, I'm making this video, this is September 15. And so this was last month. So it went pending in like, um, let's see, July, like probably July 20th. So in July 20th, somebody offered 1.375. And the reason it's, I say July 20th is because people tend to give 30 day um, offer. So the day you start, um, the day you make the offer to the closing date, that's July 20th, and it usually will be 30 days after, so like August 20th. Um, so it could have gone up by then, like maybe rates, or maybe not rates, but maybe prices have gone up and now it's worth 1.4. Um, it, it just depends on like the market you're in. And so here's another one, it's smaller, one point, or it's, this one's larger, one more bedroom. This one went for 1.6. So we know it's gonna be under 1.6. And let's see here, this one's bigger, same bedroom bath, but 300 more square feet so that's like an extra like spare room there this one went for 1.4 uh so we I think it will fall under that so unless you have someone who has a fallen in love that you're competing against it should be between a 1.4 to 1.375 and that's how I would do that now if you're looking at some and you get stumped you can feel free to ping me and I will help you with it um and, that, and so like, I would take it like that and I'd just be like, so around 1.37 to 1.4. And as you can see, that is like very different from the asking. What was this estimate here too? Um, 1.38, yeah, so I think that's pretty accurate. And that's how I eyeball it. Again, this isn't like a science. We can get really scientific. I could walk you through how an appraiser does it. Um, this is something to know too, that all appraisers are different. 
you can hire two appraisers and they can come back with totally different numbers. Um, another way to do it, which for the advanced people is price per square foot. I'm not gonna cover it in this video because I just wanted to give you an idea of how to do it fast. Like you're looking at listings and you wanna go on the, on the fly. So I hope this helped you. And yeah, if you like this, I will be having more videos like this um, and looking forward to seeing you soon sometime. Thanks.